Well, hell breaks loose at White House after Trump learns what Twitter execs just did to him. It Never Ends by Michael Schiff for VeteranAF.com. The liberal machine in Silicon Valley has never been known for their affection towards President Trump. During the 2016 presidential election, former Google executive Stephanie Hannon served as Hillary Clinton's chief technical officer, and the Clinton campaign leveraged the liberal bias in Silicon Valley to present the perception that then-candidate Trump was losing in all the polls while at the same time burying the various online sources of information regarding the various scandals Hillary Clinton had been involved in over the years. However, the tag team effort of the liberals in Silicon Valley and the Clinton war machine failed. Now that President Trump is in office, liberals and the political establishment have been incessant with their efforts to remove a democratically elected president. Now it has been revealed by Project Veritas, excellent, that Twitter is willing to violate their user's privacy policy in a lame attempt to bring down President Trump. In the video, which Project Veritas has released, Twitter senior engineer Clay Haynes can be heard making comments that Twitter is willing and eager to hand over President Trump's private Twitter messages to the Justice Department. Mr. Haynes goes on to describe that Twitter engineers seemingly have the ability to read a user's private messages even after they have been deleted, saying that the social media giant has access to every single person's account, every single direct message, deleted direct message, uh, deleted tweets, Mr. Hayes goes on to declare in the video released by Project Veritas that Twitter can see exactly who logged in, from where, with what username and password when they changed their password. On January 3rd, 2018, Mr. Hayes met with an undercover journalist from Project Veritas at the Stukies Club Modern in San Francisco, California. In the video, Mr. Haynes uh, can clearly be heard saying, we're more than happy to help the DOJ with their little investigation, referring to President Trump and Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. Even more disturbing, Mr. Hayes goes on to detail how Twitter employees have collaborated against President Trump while revealing his own bias by saying, he's dangerous, I don't like him, and he's a terrible human being, and I want to get rid of him. In fact, we had internal reviews about that. Isn't that nice? Once James O'Keefe, the head of Project Veritas, saw the footage, his undercover journalist gathered information regarding Mr. Haynes' comments about President Trump's personal messages. James O'Keefe met with, uh, with Mr. Hayes on January 7, 2018 at Morton's Steakhouse in San Francisco. Mr. O'Keefe wanted to confirm if Twitter was actively working with the DOJ or if Twitter was willingly violating the president's privacy without the presence of a subpoena. Mr. O'Keefe asked Mr. Hayes about Twitter currently working with the DOJ, to which Mr. Hayes re Ames replied, we have a subpoena process for that very reason as the conversation continues. James O'Keefe, are you working with DOJ, car uh, DOJ currently or on that? Clay uh, Haynes, I can't comment. Even if I knew, I wouldn't comment. The tone of the conversation turned to reveal that perhaps Mr. Haynes suspected something was not right and that he might uh, be eating dinner with folks who were not 
who they said they were, his tone and comments in the first meeting with Project Veritas versus the second meeting are clearly different in tone and demeanor. It would seem that the principles of free speech and privacy on Twitter users only applies to those on the left. Back in uh, April of this year, the Department of Homeland Security sent uh, Twitter in order to reveal details about a Twitter user who was opposed to President Trump's immigration policies. DHS did not comment specifically on their uh, motives behind their demand, but it could have had something to do with various Twitter users stealing names and logos from U.S. government agencies. Twitter sued DHS and released a statement saying the rights of uh, free speech afforded Twitter users uh, and Twitter itself under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution include a right to disseminate such an, uh, anonymous or pseudonymous uh, pseudonymous, <laughs> pseudonymous, uh, pseudonymous uh, political speech. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Since the release of the uh, video by Project Veritas, neither Twitter or President Trump have commented on the matter. If uh, President Trump's private Twitter messages had contained anything incriminating, it is likely that this information would have already been leaked to the mainstream media and the DOJ. What is disturbing about Mr. Haynes' revelations is that it is clear Twitter has no issue with violating a user's privacy so long as the left politically justifies it. It is no secret that the higher-ups at Twitter have no love for President Trump, but this video released by Project Veritas puts the social media giant in a bad predict uh, predicament, revealing the true nature of what they are doing and what they are willing to do, regardless of the law or moral consequences. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that something? Isn't that something? American Prompted by James O'Keefe. Excellent. Uh, it was not my decision. Mm -hmm. uh, the decision, though, was that most of the stuff he tweets is completely newsworthy. Okay. And so because it's newsworthy, even though he's made a complete ass out of himself for the country, um, we have to let those tweets up and let him do it. Essentially, he has carte blanche uh, and do whatever he wants. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, is that we're more than, healthy, we're more than happy to help uh, the Department of Justice in their little investigation. Okay. <laughs> so, how? Basically, given that every single tweet that he's posted, okay. even the ones he's deleted, okay. any direct messages, Good. any mentions. Oh, yeah. So it's, I'm glad that you're doing that. Something. Yeah, um, Something needs to be done. Yeah. This conversation took place in our second meeting with Haynes. There would be many more. I decided to meet with him myself to see if I could confirm the story. So we're, we're putting on the disguise for tonight's meeting with Clay. We're just changing the hair up a little bit. We're going to be putting on some glasses and we're going to be going to the steakhouse to meet with Clay. It still looks like and, him. Um, talk politics. Wow. So you should, you should, you should. Okay, junior and senior, senior, and see what what's in there. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen? There, there's a there's a reason why we have subpoena process for that very reason. Oh, wow. Okay. But yeah, we can absolutely look at every single message, every single tweet, whatever you want into, what mm -hmm. profile pictures you upload, what profile pictures that you thought were going to do. Um, Are you working with DOJ currently on that? Uh, I can't comment. Any. If I knew, I wouldn't comment. But we don't know if there is a subpoena from justice requesting the information, or if Twitter has just volunteered it to the Mueller investigation on its own. To be frank, we don't have enough information, but if anyone at Twitter would know about such things, it would be Clay Haynes. Exactly. Why do you keep it? 
guess I don't get that in the, in the um, field. So I don't get why you, why you keep it. Who cares? If we ever get subpoenaed. Oh, okay. Mostly law enforcement and also helps us to detect the pattern of history. It's, it's kind of, it's very, very dangerous. Okay. Um, also, very, very, very big The fact is, even if Haynes was just speculating about helping justice, his admission shows a clear and dangerous political bias at the highest levels of Twitter. I'm a bleeding heart liberal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it comes to the territory. Mm -hmm. So you're hoping that this year goes by fast because he's in office? Personally, that personally, I'm just glad 2017 went fast. <laughs> you're not a you're not a Trump lover. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> On one hand, yes, he's dangerous. I don't like him. And he's a terrible human being, and I plan to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had uh, internal reviews about that, and we basically—I wasn't the only one that basically said that if we let this maniac, if someone wants it, if we let this maniac continue, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a hard time finding another job. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you know I don't like being part of the the machine that is contributing to the exactly. America's downfall. We're more than happy to help uh, the Department of Justice in their little investigation. Maybe there is a subpoena from justice. But if there is, does Twitter just have to roll over and give up private information of the president? No, they don't. Just last year, the FBI asked Apple to help unlock the phone of a San Bernardino terrorist. I remember that. A seemingly reasonable request. Absolutely. But Apple fought it, mm -hmm. claiming there was a bigger issue involved. Apple's CEO said the request from Justice was chilling. Interestingly, Twitter's CEO, Jack Dorsey, supported Apple's stand. Maybe Jack Dorsey needs to grow some apples. Grow some apples? He's being nice. He's being real nice. You know what I'm saying? He's being real nice because, you see... For the criminals, they won't release the information, yet for the President of the United States, who the people elected, and look what they're doing to him. Uh, excellent work, uh, James O'Keefe. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and again, thank you so much for watching.